Hi there, Liana here. I hope everybody is doing well and staying healthy and happy out there. So since it's Wellness Wednesday, I thought we would talk about um, food sensitivities. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of um, Everly Well, but I decided to invest and uh, take that, that food sensitivity test. And so I would love to share the results with you because they were kind of surprising actually. So for those of that you don't know me, I've kind of been on a journey for the last 25 years of how to improve my health and the health of, you know, those around me. And when I was in my early 20s after college, I was diagnosed with Graves' disease. Um, it was kind of hard to uh, diagnose because um, I didn't have the typical symptoms. Usually a lot of people lose weight and get really thin. And But what it is, Graves' disease is an overactive thyroid. And so my thyroid was overworking. And so how I knew something was wrong is I would go on a you know regular hike or I would go on a bike ride. I mean, early 20s, I was in decent shape and I would have to just stop and pant and my heart was racing so fast. And um, the other symptom was I couldn't stop eating. So <laughs> I like to eat anyway, so I didn't really think that was a symptom, but uh, my metabolism was just you know going crazy. And so I found myself eating, so I didn't get that nice benefit of weight loss. In fact, I was gaining weight. Um, but anyway, we finally figured out what it was and I ended up um, trying medication that didn't work and then going and having um, radioactive treatment to get the, the thyroid. Um, basically killed off. So I don't have thyroid, a, a thyroid anymore. So I take um, some medicine daily um, in order to, uh, you know, provide back the thyroid that I need. Um, but I was still, you know, having residual symptoms, um, you know, and what was going on. So I um, have just been on this journey of finding different ways to improve how I feel. And I've been very successful and I, I am almost there. Like I feel like I finally have the energy and the clarity and the sleep. Um, but I, I also felt like there, just in the last year, there was some weird relationship I was having with food. And um, I wasn't even having the typical, you know, stomach upset. It was more joint issues. So I also have hallux rigidus, which is, um, it's basically stage four arthritis in my big toe joints and they're on both toes. And I, I do need surgery on both toes eventually, but you know, I'm 42 years old and I really don't wanna be down and have that surgery yet. So I'm doing everything I possibly can to um, you know prevent that. And, and I think ways to help is bringing your inflammation down in your body. And I also have like a, a shoulder impingement when I broke my wrist. Um, and so I feel like when I eat food, those um, issues flare up and I actually, you know, can feel my, my toes hurting more and my shoulder hurting more. But sometimes, you know, when I'm eating, um, you know, good and clean though, and I thought it was basically sugar related, but it's obviously there are other issues um, that I am sensitive to. So I thought I would just kind of share this journey with you in hopes that maybe, you know, it'll, it'll help with something that you have going on. Um, so, you know, I looked at uh, Everly Well because they're very reputable. Um, their food sensitivity kit um, is uh, reasonably priced. I actually had a coupon code, so it wasn't too expensive. It's basically, you order it online, they send it to your house, you prick your fingers and, and you know, two, four little dots, and then you wrap it up and they give you all this stuff to send it back. And it took about 17 days from the time I ordered it, from the time I got my results. So I was pretty pleased. That was, um, wasn't was too long of a time to wait. I ordered it on May 31st. It delivered to me on the 4th of June. I sent it back, I did my test, I sent it back on the 5th of June, and then I just got my results back yesterday. Um, and just as a disclaimer, I'm not um, an affiliate or anything having to do with this test. I just think it's going to be helpful and I thought I would share um, you know, just another tool that we have to help improve our um, health and wellness. So uh, I ended up paying $119, um, shipping was free. I did the um, basic food sensitivity test that covers basically 96 different foods from you know all your meats, fruits, veggies, eggs, seafood, nuts, dairy, legumes, um, spices, and grains. And they say it's between 95 and 99% accurate. So I felt confident that I was going to, you know, get 
pretty accurate results. Um, and then it's good to know that there's a difference between a food sensitivity, a food allergy, as well as a food intolerance. So, you know, a food allergy is going to be something that, um, you know, like those people that have peanut allergies and they have anaphylactic reactions. That is actually um, tested and looked at your IgE antibodies and how your histamine responses. That is different from food sensitivity. And then there's food intolerance, which is a little bit different, and that is um, actually not having the enzymes to break down some of the foods. So you'll hear people say they're lactose intolerant. So that is also different, and those symptoms are a little bit um, more severe diarrhea, nausea, and bloating. So I didn't really have those types of symptoms. What, what I dealt with was um, mostly just joint discomfort. But some other things on May be, you know, an idea to do a food sensitivity test is if you are having acne and not sure why, or you're bloated, um, you're having dry, itchy skin, you have brain fog, um, joint pain, diarrhea, constipation, eczema, fatigue, if you're tired all the time, you're waking up tired, if you have acid reflux, if you're dealing with some sort of depression or anxiety, headaches, sinus issues. So there's a lot of different areas that actually food sensitivities can trigger. And I'm lucky that mine were really mild um, with, with mostly just joint pain. I take another supplement that has helped bring down my inflammation and um, you know all of those other residual symptoms. Um, it's, it's helped me um, in those ways. So really the kind of the lingering one was um, uh, the joint pain. Uh, and then also, you know, weight. I was looking in and if you've, if you've ever listened to JJ Virgin, um, she's a great health and wellness um, advocate. And I follow her and she's talked a lot about how food sensitivities can halt your weight loss. And so, um, you know, this, that's the other reason why I was kind of looking into this. I have lost weight, but I'm kind of at a plateau. And then, you know, with um, being in quarantine, I'm, I'm grateful that I haven't gained weight, but I've also, you know, felt like I could improve um, and actually lose weight. So we'll see what happens when I, um, you know, do an elimination diet. And it's nice to know I don't have to eliminate everything. But my results were surprising because I didn't think I had that many and I ended up, so it rates it between a zero and a three, zero being no reaction, a one being a mild reaction, two is moderate, and then three is more severe. Um, I didn't have any of the high ones. I didn't have any severe reactions, which was great. And I only had two moderate. So my two moderate though, one of them was really surprising and it's egg whites. So egg whites um, came up actually as a pretty high moderate. And that makes total sense when I look back because when I would decide to eat better, I mean, what is a great protein source for breakfast or a snack? I would go to uh, a hard boiled egg or have eggs in the morning. And so that makes a lot of sense. So egg whites was my um, moderate and the other moderate was yogurt. So I kind of suspected, I mean, dairy just in general is very inflammatory and I don't eat a lot of it anyways for that reason. So that wasn't surprising. And then, so I had several others that were in the mild range. Um, egg yolk was one of them. So eggs are out for me, <laughs> which is kind of a bummer because it's such an easy protein, but that's okay. I can deal with that. So egg yolks was one in the mild eggplant i didn't i didn't suspect i don't eat a lot of eggplant so i'm okay with that um coffee i actually gave up coffee about five years ago um just because it didn't make me feel good and um i have a, a better source of energy now with the supplements that i take so i don't need it anymore so that's been nice so um coffee is on my mild um, another one that was really surprising that was on mild that i would never suspect is basil I grow basil in my backyard. I don't eat it a ton, um, but I'm wondering as, as I'm thinking back if there's been a correlation and this is pretty high mild. Um, the other surprising one was chicken. I never thought I had any reactions to chicken. So um, surprising. And my family actually doesn't eat a ton of chicken. My husband got sick on chicken, you know, like, I don't know, 10 years ago. So, you know, he still has a little bit of an aversion, so he doesn't eat chicken often. 
So that one's not too bad, but it was surprising. Um, and then garlic. Garlic is on my mild. So um, I love garlic. I love cooking with garlic. I love garlic bread. <laughs> so um, I will start uh, reducing my garlic. And then another one I thought was interesting was ginger. I eat sushi a lot and I will eat that whole little side of ginger. And I thought that was good for my gut and I thought it was good for, um, you know, getting probiotics because it's pickled, but I don't know. I guess it's not. So um, another one that is not, uh, that I've reacted mild and I, it is surprising because I always thought my husband was the one with the issue, but it's gluten. So uh, my husband came up with no gluten response, but he came up with wheat response. So interesting, it's not a very high one for me, gluten. It's the lowest mild one, but I am going to go ahead and nix the gluten and see if it makes a difference in my joint pain. Um, and then the other uh, mild was cow's milk, which again is not surprising. But um, what's interesting is it even breaks it down so far to say that cheddar cheese I don't react to, but mozzarella I do a little bit more cow's milk I have a mild and then a yogurt I have moderate so kind of interesting if you want to kind of break down and, and if you're doing a food sensitivity test you'll kind of know what to eliminate and then what to gradually introduce back to see what your symptoms are so I'm going to take the next you know two months and eliminate definitely eggs dairy gluten garlic um ginger, but that's easy. I mean, some of these things I don't have to chicken. Some of these things I don't have to worry about because they're not really big in my diet anyways. And then kind of see how I feel. I mean, I'm, I'm grateful that I feel pretty good overall. Um, and I really do attest those to <laughs> the supplements that I take. Um, they, I mean, I can't imagine if I had these issues and I hadn't been working on my gut health for the last five years. So Anyway, I thought I would share because it was really interesting information. I hope that maybe somebody out there will benefit from it. And um, I'll come, I'll post my link down below because you do get um, a discount if you um, order an Everly Well test um, online uh, with my referral link. So um, you're welcome to use that. Uh, and there's all different kinds of tests. There's actually one that um, tests for COVID. There's a test that you can get that does more than 96 for food sensitivities, but they do vitamin D testing and thyroid testing and hormones. So anyway, it's just another resource to um, have out there if you, you know, want to get some data and see how, you know, what your body is doing. And I feel like the more education we can have about our body, the better that we can, you know, work on a personalized um, you know, plan on how to feel better. And, you know, sometimes it's frustrating because you feel like doctors out there, you know, don't take the time and it is important for us to take it on, you know, as it be an advocate for ourselves and try to figure, you know, these things out and, and use all of the resources that we have from, you know, natural and the medical community and testing. I mean, whatever you can do to uh, improve, I think is well worth the investment. You are worth the investment. And so, I'm excited to see what happens. I'll keep you guys posted. Maybe I'll do another video in a couple weeks. And But if you have any questions or want to reach out or want to know the supplements I take, I'm happy to share. And I just hope you guys stay healthy and, health, healthy and happy out there. Bye-bye.